Here is a wise virgin from among the number of the prudent who went forth with lighted lamp to meet Christ. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Please join me in offering this Mass for Kathleen Landry. As the Church honors Saint Scholastica today, she is the sister of Saint Benedict, and she too built up a community, a religious community in the early Church. And so as we gather together today and celebrate this Eucharist, we are a community of faith, members of the body of Christ. And so we ask her intercession as we turn to the Lord and acknowledge both the ways we have faithfully followed him in the example of Saint Scholastica, but also the ways that we have sinned and need God's mercy and forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you were sent to heal the brokenhearted, Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. You nourish and strengthen us in word and in sacrament, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. As we celebrate anew the memorial of the Virgin Saint Scholastica, we pray, O Lord, that following her example, we may serve you with pure love and happily receive what comes from loving you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. At the time when the Lord God made the earth and the heavens, while as yet there was no field shrub on earth, and no grass of the field had sprouted, for the Lord God had sent no rain upon the earth, and there was no man to till the soil. But a stream was welling up out of the earth, and was watering all the surface of the ground. The Lord God formed man out of clay of the ground, and blew into his nostrils the breath of life, and so man became a living being. Then the Lord God planted a garden in Eden in the east, and he placed there the man whom he had formed. Out of the ground the Lord God made various trees grow that were delightful to look at and good for food, with the tree of life in the middle of the garden and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. The Lord God then took the man and settled him in the Garden of Eden to cultivate and care for it. The Lord God gave man this order. You are free to eat from any of the trees of the garden except the tree of knowledge of good and evil. From that tree you shall not eat. The moment you eat from it, you are surely doomed to die. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. O oh, bless the Lord, my soul. O oh, bless the Lord, my soul. Bless the Lord, O oh, my soul. O oh, Lord, my God, you are great indeed. You are clothed with majesty and glory, robed in light as with a cloak. O oh, bless the Lord, my soul. All creatures look to you to give them food in due time. When you give it to them, they gather it. When you open your hand, they are filled with good things. O oh, bless the Lord, my soul. If you take away their breath, they perish and return to their dust. When you send forth your spirit, they are created, and you renew the face of the earth. O oh, bless the Lord, my soul.
Alléluia, Alléluia, Alléluia. Consecrators in the truth, Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus summoned the crowd again and said to them, Hear me, all of you, and understand. Nothing that enters one from outside can defile that person, but the things that come out from within are what defile. When he got home away from the crowd, his disciples questioned him about the parable. He said to them, uh, Even you likewise without understanding, do you not realize that everything that goes into a person from outside cannot defile, since it, is ent it enters not the heart but the stomach and passes out into the return. Thus he declared all food clean, but what comes out of the man, that is what defiles him. From within the man, from his heart, come evil thoughts and chastity, theft, murder, adultery, greed, malice, deceit, licentiousness, envy, blasphemy, arrogance, folly. All these evils come from within and they defile. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So yesterday we had a very clear and definitive end to the creation story in Genesis chapter 1. And yet today, at the beginning of Genesis chapter 2, we have a new creation story. Bible scholars have studied the book of Genesis very carefully and have discerned that there are probably at least four different schools of thought or four different ways of teaching apparent in the book of Genesis. As with the Gospels, these were things handed on verbally from generation to generation before they were ever written down. And so God inspired these different human authors to put these teachings in writing and ultimately they were brought together, synthesized, if you will, for the most part. And so we hear another tradition, expression of the creation story. And the, essen the essential, excuse me, the essential part of these creation stories is not this happened first and this happened second, we have the same problem in the four Gospels, where the, the order of events is not always the same. But that's not what's important. What is important 
is that it's God's inspired word that is meant to guide us in the truth, the ultimate truth of our salvation. And so in today's version of the creation story, we hear how God formed man out of the clay of the ground. In two weeks? No, in one week. We will hear, remember you are dust, and unto dust you will return. We are formed out of inanimate objects, material. But God breathes life. God's word is life. And he breathes that life into our lungs like the breath of fresh air when we open the window on a cold winter day. Fresh air, right? It's fresh air because it is God's gift of life. Incidentally, St. Scholastica, it is said that when she passed away, that her soul ascended to heaven like a dove, reminiscent of the Holy Spirit, so that that breath of life, ruach, that means spirit, is also a word for breath, that breath of life that God breathed into her, ascended into heaven to be with the Lord that she loved and that she served so faithfully as a virgin and a founder of a monastic community. It goes on in the book of Genesis, second chapter, to talk about God's gift of life in many forms and how these are gifts to us in our humanity. But there are limits to how we are to use these gifts. And really the only rule that God gives in the very beginning is not to eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. It's not that God doesn't want us to thrive. It's not that he doesn't want us to have all things. But he knows that once we know what is good and what is evil, then we are responsible for our choices. We are responsible to use the knowledge that we have in good, life-giving, and moral ways. And when we fail to do so, it is sin. It is sin, and sin brings death. And sure enough, from the moment that we eat of that tree of good, knowledge of good and evil, we are doomed to die. But that is not the end of the story. We'll hear more tomorrow, and we hear more in the gospel each day, where God's rescue missions continue to be sent up to the pinnacle of his own son, Jesus Christ, who teaches us that it's not about what we put into our bodies that makes us holy or defiled, but that how we act how we respond to God's gifts and what comes out of us. Do we breathe that gift of life into others or do we bring death in the way that we sin and mistreat others? God's desire is for us to have life and to have it to the fullest. Trusting in God's providential care, we give voice to our intercessions, to our prayers of the faithful. For the Church, for her purity of heart, that what emerges from her members may be wholesome and kind, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That God, who formed man out of the clay of the ground and blew into his nostrils the breath of life, may help all leaders of nations to hold every human life in reverence. 
We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who cultivate the land, that they may care for it as God intended, and not allowed greed to permanently damage its natural resources. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are languishing in the shadow of death, the sick, the afflicted and oppressed, that through our prayers God may send forth his spirit into them and renew the face of the earth. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our beloved dead, that the fruit of the tree of life may be their portion in the land of the living. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And especially we pray for Kathleen Landry, for whom this Mass is offered, <clears throat> and for all of our beloved deceased, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for hearing our every prayer, our every need, those spoken, those in our hearts, and those prayers others have asked us to offer for them. We pray that your, your guidance, your providential care, and your wisdom will teach us how to live in your ways, how to use the gift of knowledge in service of you and in love of one another. We ask all these things through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May we receive, O Lord, we pray, the effects of this offering dedicated to you, so that we may be cleansed from old earthly ways and through the example of blessed Saint Scholastica, be renewed by growth in heavenly life. Through Christ our Lord, amen. amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For in the saints who consecrated themselves to Christ for the sake of the kingdom of heaven, it is right to celebrate the wonders of your providence by which you call human nature back to its original holiness and bring it to experience on this earth the gifts you promise in the new world to come. And so with all the angels and saints we praise you, and as without end we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered together into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Sean our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember your servant, Catherine Landry, whom you have called from this world to yourself, grant that she who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them, Lord, into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and Martyrs, with Saint Martha, Saint Scholastica, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. We who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer one another a sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. The five wise virgins brought flasks of oil with their lamps. Then at midnight, the cry went up, Behold, the bridegroom is coming. Come out to meet Christ the Lord.
On behalf of those joining us by video, we pray the prayer for spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. May the holy reception of the body and blood of your only begotten Son, O Lord, turn us away from the cares of this fleeting world, so that following the example of Saint Scholastica, we may grow in sincere love for you on earth and rejoice to behold you for eternity in heaven. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Two quick announcements, if I may. Let's see if I can call this up quickly. Uh, several of you will know Kevin Mooney, longtime member of the parish here, who uh, as a single man, courageously adopted uh, three young boys uh, whose mother has been troubled and I'm, I'm not sure the story of the father. Unfortunately, the mother passed away. And so we're asked to pray for Kathy Pereira, uh, the mother of these three boys, and of course for Kevin's boys and the whole of Kathy's family. Um, so please keep them in your prayers in these days as the boys who range from confirmation age down to about fifth grade, I think, um, may be supported in this difficult time. On a more hopeful note, uh, my term as pastor is a six-year term, which comes up for renewal in June. And so I received a note recently from the clergy personnel office asking what I would like to do next. And so after continued discernment, I, asked, uh, I wrote a formal letter to Cardinal Sean asking to be reappointed of St. Martha Parish and St. Mary Parish. Um, so God willing, God willing, it's not a done deal, um, but it is the norm that these things normally happen when, the, when there are no major problems. If a pastor wants to be reappointed and uh, the consultation process that they're doing now, so Father Lambert better put in a good word, uh, the consultation process uh, should be wrapped up within a couple of months and we should know shortly after Easter that that is confirmed. But just to let you know that my intention is to stay and if God and the Cardinal agree, we're in good shape. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life.